I'm Steve for This Hook With Cars and today I have my 1972 Land Rover Series 3. I've owned this Land Rover for over 15 years. It was my first off-road vehicle and because I have owned it for so long there are things on this Land Rover that I did 15 years ago that I would do differently today. So although there's nothing wrong with this Land Rover right now, I would like to clean up and improve some things that I did in the past. I used to drive this Land Rover a lot and I even used to drive it on the interstate and this engine would get kind of hot. So to remedy that, I installed an electric radiator fan. You can see it right through there. But the way that I wired it up, it is running all the time. And not only does it make unnecessary noise when it's not needed, but it is running when you're trying to start the engine. And if the Land Rover has sat for a little bit, the battery is a little bit flat. Having an electric fan running that doesn't need to be running is not an ideal situation. So if we sit here in the driver's seat and we turn the ignition to the on position, from here, you can hear that radiator fan spinning up. I have not driven this vehicle today, so there's no reason for that fan to be running now because the engine is completely cool and does not need that fan running. I didn't want to drill extra holes in my dash to add a manual switch to turn the fan on and off. And one of the reasons I haven't installed a thermostat to turn the fan on and off yet is that there's not any good places to put a port on this engine to install a sensor in. So what I'm going to do today is install this inline adapter. You cut your hose in half and then you install this in the middle of it. It has a sensor on the top and another bolt right here that you install your other wire to so that it grounds this fitting and then as the hot water passes through this fitting once it gets to a certain temperature it will turn the fan on this is from American Volt there are other companies that make things similar to this there is uh, one from a company I can't remember the name of it right now that they make a lot of these that are meant to go into retrofitting British cars but that comes with the relay and other things that I don't need because I've already installed that equipment onto this vehicle. So I decided to try out this cheaper option from American Volt. By the way, if you are doing this at home, this is the 38 millimeter version. And let's talk about where I should install this. You can put a switch or a temperature sensor in here. So if you're using a temperature sensor, you'll want to put it in your upper radiator hose so that you are reading the temperature coming out of the engine. And if you install a fan switch in the upper radiator hose, your fan will come on sooner because the hot water will be entering the radiator here. And if you install this in the lower radiator hose, the fan will only come on when the radiator needs the fan's help to cool the water coming out of it. But of course, on some cars, one hose over the other might be harder to reach or to access or to get to if you need to service it. If you're adding your electric fan in addition to your mechanical fan, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer to where you put this. You might even want to install this in a lower radiator hose because you want to hide it and maintain a stock look under the bonnet. The lower radiator hose on the series Land Rover is a curved hose. So I think it makes the most sense to install it in the short straight section on the top hose. So I put down a pan and I'm going to loosen this top hose. Now it's a simple matter of cutting a length of hose out so that I can put this in line. I need to add a gap in the hose that is the distance of this square section. So I'm going to mark that on the hose and that's where I will make my cuts. I'm going to orient this so that the sensors are pointed towards the battery and the rest of my wiring. And this did come with some new hose clamps, so I'm going to put those on. I'm not very impressed with these clamps from American Volt. So American Volt, if you're watching this, these are trash. This isn't even big enough to fit the fitting 
that you sold it with. So you need better hose clamps. I wasn't even going to say anything, but this one also stripped out. So I'll probably end up replacing the other hose clamp that came from American Volt as well. As far as the mechanical side, this is completely installed now. I just need to top off my coolant level and the rest of this install is all electrical. Now let's take a look at the wiring and this is where I would do things a little bit different today. I wouldn't be using the same connectors and butt connectors, definitely not the T's that I used back then. I would use higher quality connectors, especially being up here and being for a critical item, I would use uh, weather tight connectors for these things. And if I was installing this today, I probably would have cut the wires to length so that I wouldn't have so much extra wire around here, maybe even put it into a split loom. But for now, let's hook up our new sensor to control this relay, which turns fan on and off. Looks like this red wire right here that is connected to this blue wire is the one that activates the relay to turn the fan on. I'm not a fan of this connector anyway, so I'm just going to pull that wire out. It looks like I crimped it pretty good. Let's double check that this works the way that I think it does. So let's connect this wire to the positive terminal of the battery and the fan should turn on. So this is the positive signal to tell the relay to turn on. I could connect the blue and red wires over here, but that would mean that this block would then be hot. And if this were to touch the bonnet or you were working in here with a wrench, this would be hot and that would be a bad thing to have this entire thing being hot. It would be better to use the earth side of the relay and bring it over to here. It looks like the earth side of the relay is either the green wire or the red wire. So I'm going to cut the green and red wire. I'm going to use some test leads to connect the red wire back to itself, which should supply the ground to the fan. I will also need to reconnect this blue wire to the positive side of the battery. Okay, now if I touch my green alligator clip to the ground, the fan turns on and runs. So that means I have all these connections correct. I just need to get my sensor in line with this green wire now. Essentially bringing this over here and then adding another wire off of this little post to the ground. I think today to fix this wiring, I'm going to try out a new product. This is called solder sticks. And this is a little ring of solder within the connector and when you start to melt it that little ring turns into a liquid solder and solders the two wires together and then of course this is heat shrink on the side so there's actually no crimping involved with using these just put the two wires together and heat this up let's try these out and see if these are any good so these two red wires need to be put back together i'm going to try an experiment I'm going to use red heat shrink and I'm going to put that over this solder stick connector. And I already see this connector is not going to be the best if your wire is not very long. You will have to use a normal butt connector if your wire is not very long. This one uses about half of what I had left of this one. So I'll stick these together. The wires are meeting where that solder is. This is another issue with this is it's a little bit hard to hold the two wires together since they're not crimped. Let's heat this up. The solder hasn't melted yet.
Heat shrink is looking good. Looks like the solder is about to go. I guess that's it. It looks like it's easy to burn the, the heat shrink before that solder is maybe melted. I'm going to slip my other heat shrink over it just to hold it straight. Shrink that. Well, that doesn't look too bad. We'll let that cool down. The blue wire now, instead of going to switch power, is going to go straight to the battery. And now my green wire, I'll take over to the sensor. This is just going to be a signal wire, so it does not need to be very thick. This might actually be where these crimpless solder connectors might actually shine when you're combining wires of two different diameters. I think again, I will use another piece of heat shrink over this so that you don't see this connector. So I'll slip that on. Bring the solder so that it will melt the two ends together. This is going to be the trick holding it so that they stay in place till it's melted. This time I'm going to go straight for the solder, see if I can get that to melt right away. Without burning my fingers. Okay, I think it melted. Just finish off the heat shrink. Now I guess I wait till that cools down. Feels like it has a pretty good grip on both wires. If I place this piece of heat shrink over them, it should make it pretty durable. If I was on safari in my Land Rover, I would definitely want to take these with me because if I had a torch or a lighter or even a piece of wood from a campfire, I could connect wires together without having any crimping tools. I'm done now with the wiring here at the relay. Now I just need to wire up a ground connector to this little bolt right here. Here's a little ring terminal that I'm going to use to connect it up here. The little bolt will go right through there. None of these terminals came with the kit. It would be nice if they sent you the terminal for this little end. Let's see if I can even do this without losing this tiny bolt. My plan to get the ground is to connect this wire to this bolt right here. That way I have just a short wire that runs along the hose right here. Double check that my terminal does fit the bolt. 
Before I put this bolt back in, I'm going to take it over to the wire wheel, clean it up, and then I'm going to put anti-seize on it so that it doesn't rust in there again. The bolt is cleaned up. I'm going to take some anti-seize, a little bit on there. Now we can test if I did everything right. The way this switch works is it will close when it gets to a certain temperature. So that means that if I take this off and I just touch it to the housing here, the fan should run. Which it does. So I have everything wired correctly. The only thing now to do is start the engine, let it warm up, and make sure that this thermal switch is in working order. I'll let the engine run for a bit. We'll see if it warms up and turns the fan on. I can feel it is getting warm to the touch now, so I expect its fan to turn on any time. This has been running for a while now and the fan has not kicked on yet. I did buy a 180 degree Fahrenheit switch and right now we're only at 130 degrees. Somewhere between 130 it looks like 130, 140 degrees. Top of our radiator is 150 degrees. So it looks like it's working and this proves the point that right now idling, the Land Rover does not need the electric fan. And previously it would have been running this entire time and it wasn't even needed. That's going to be it for today. If you want to see more videos of me improving and working on my series Land Rover, Comment below and click subscribe.